All right, welcome back to the workshop on these. This is my workshop. Uh, I went ahead, if you looked at a, had a, saw a previous video, I think there's an issue with this potentiometer. Um, so I went ahead and purchased a new one. They're pretty inexpensive. So I thought I'm just gonna swap it out. Well, it's easy enough to do, right? Uh, uh, so I thought I would share it and let you see what's involved in changing a potentiometer out. Um, hopefully it's not soldered on there. If it is, then I'll have to mess with that. But again, there's a set screw on the knob that you need to loosen up. And uh, that comes right off of there. And then uh, let's turn it a little bit here. Then there's just a screw. Uh, of course, of course, of course. Let me get a proper wrench. All right. Just a screw, holds it on there. Maybe. Should come off of there and there's a washer so be careful not to lose that and the panel just comes off of there I don't know if you saw that but that's what was in there um, so the washer and the potentiometer um, let's see I'm not sure, it might be soldered on. They might just be pushed on. I think they might be soldered on. If that's the case, I'm gonna have to, yeah, I'm gonna have to re-solder. Yep, so they're, they're soldered on. Um, so I'm gonna have to work on that, but essentially you get the idea. I've got the replacement here. bag and there we go so there's the replacement pretty much looks identical so I'll work on getting this one soldered on and uh, hopefully we'll be back up and running All right, well, I went ahead and bought a new potentiometer. It's probably just as crappy. It was about the cheapest one I could find online. Um, but I do wanna get this lathe functional again. And uh, I may take this apart and try to clean it. And you know, that will have a spare. But honestly, I just wanna replace it and see if that helps. Um, it's it's the same thing, got all the same markings on it. We'll see if it works. Um, I'm just gonna desolder these and then solder them back on. Uh, but I did wanna say, I'm also taking this opportunity to contact support. Let's see how this is. It's part of another review with the Vivor Mini Lathe is part of the support. What kind of support do you get? They claim you got 24 seven support and you have a 12 month warranty. So um, I'm gonna, Summarize at the end of this video my support experience. I'll include that on this uh, recap because this is going to be a replacement video trying to repair the issue. But in addition, I want to share an honest opinion about how their support is. Now, to the at the moment, I initially went to Amazon. Well, I'll get into that at the end of the video. Um, I'll go through all the details of what I'm doing. Um, it's not a straightforward process like you could imagine, but there are people responding. So I'll, I'll give a good summary when it's all said and done. Um, it's either going to be positive or negative. They're either going to fix the problem or, or make a, 
a suitable workaround. I don't know. Um, or they won't help me at all. We'll find out, but they are responding. So we'll go from there, but I'm not going to record this because the camera's in the way. All I'm going to do is desolder this and solder in the new uh, pot, and we'll see if that fixes the issue. Well, I lied, like usual. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to record this. Why not? That's what this channel's about. So I've got this little mini vise, if uh, any of you remember from previous video. I've got my Heiko uh, soldering iron ready to go. I've got that warmed up. And what we're gonna do is desolder these. And, uh, and I'm using this vise in order to help hold it in place. Um, one thing I want to do is get this shrink wrap pulled off of here if I can. I'm not so sure I'll be able to. I suppose I could just clip the wires. Maybe that'd be the best thing. And then re-strip them. Yeah, these are these ones won't come off like that one did. But anyway, there's some shrink wrap on there. Um, let me get this cleaned up, get this taken off. Remember, black, red, green. That's how this is going to go. And then we'll put that... Uh, put that on with the next one. Um, I'm going to pause you here, get some wire strippers because I'll need a little bit for soldering. I'll bring you right back. All right. So let's go ahead and just get this taken off. I don't need to desolder it, I guess, if I'm going to cut it. So let's get these cut off. I'll leave myself with a little bit. There we go. So there's my reference, black, red, green. Yep. Watch your toes. And let's see. I think maybe that should be. Maybe down. I don't think you can see, but I gotta get that in there and I don't want these wires to interfere. There we go. So let's get a couple screws started. Again, this part of the video is just to see if I can fix it. By the way, I bought this potentiometer. This is not a support piece. This is uh, one that I just got off Amazon. I think it was less than eight dollars, eight dollar, eight and a half dollars shipped total. I think. Um, let's let's get this secure before we go turning this thing on. Make sure. Because we, we want to test this, you know, we got to make sure that it's going to work for us. Maybe. This is so janky. If you watch some of my previous videos, the, the assembly of this is just, it's pretty janky. But it is what it is. Without the entry point, price entry point of this, we none of us, well, many of us, wouldn't even get into this hobby. So I'm thankful that they make them and I'm thankful they provide them at a pretty reasonable cost. Um, you know, quality is what it is. Uh, it's too bad that it's not a little better. I mean, this thing wasn't free. It costs us all quite a bit of money to get into this. Um, but, you know, without it, we wouldn't have got got into this hobby. But again, this part of the video is going to just be to see if I fixed it. Um, let's see, again, I wanted to, that's all the way down. Let's tighten this up. I'm gonna get this tightened up. I'll get the knob back on. You don't need to see how to do that. And then I'll bring you back for the first test.
All right, welcome back. Um, I guess I lied, I didn't put the knob on yet. Let's go ahead and get that on. Again, this is at the, the zero spot. So let's, right there. So let's line this up somewhere in there. It's not critical. Okay, good enough, you get the idea. Okay, we're gonna turn this on. I've got it plugged back in and we're gonna see if, see if this is behaving any better. Hopefully, I haven't turned it on yet, so hopefully uh, we didn't mess anything up. Okay, it's at zero. The issue that we had was when we go up to about 500, it would uh, just slow down automatically. Fingers crossed. Let's hope that uh, this is going to repair it. We'll see if it even works. There, we're at 600. Let's let that sit there a minute. Seems to be holding pretty steady. See if you can see that. Rolling up. Let's turn it back down. It's about 300, 400 RPMs. I think that's going to work. I think we're. Uh... Let's do that again. 500 RPM, and this is about when it would slow down on its own. It was doing it right away, so I, I think we got this fixed. I think it was a potentiometer. Um, let's make sure we can get our 1250. Usually 800, not much more than 1,000, as fast as I ever go. It goes down to 30 with this potentiometer. That's as slow as I can make it. Anyway. I think we got it. That's enough testing. Turn that down. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave the video cut here for now. But at the end of this video, look for my review of the support. Because I'm going to pursue the support as if I didn't buy my own part to fix this. And I want to make sure they're going to honor the warranty. And at the very least, send me a potentiometer. But... Maybe give me a refund. I, I don't know how they're going to pursue this, but we're going to find out together. So this second part video of this potentiometer issue is going to be all about Vivor's review of their support, a support review of Vivor um, and how they help me out. And I will give a detailed account of everything that happened. I actually believe the reseller through Amazon that I got this from was Bulboron. So just a little detail for anybody curious. But more to come on that. Thanks for watching. I think we got this fixed. More tests later to confirm, but I think we got it. Don't be afraid to replace the potentiometer. Easy enough to do. Seems to have worked. All right. Welcome back. And for the moment that 
everybody's been waiting for. VBOR support review. So let me uh, detail what happened. You just saw the video. My uh, variable speed potentiometer was flaking out on me. Um, it would, you'd set it at a particular speed and the thing would slow down on its own. So it wouldn't maintain the setting that it was set at. It's probably dirty wipers inside the potentiometer. Regardless, uh, the consensus was it was faulty. But I used this opportunity to test the 12 month warranty that you get with this particular lathe. Now, it's a VBOR lathe, so you would think the manufacturer's warranty would be VBOR, but the reseller happened to be Boberon, B-O-B-O-R-A-N. Anyway, there's a, there's a bunch of resellers out there, Best Equip, Boberon, I think they're all the same to be honest with you, but this was a Boberon reseller of the VBOR mini lathe. And I bought it through Amazon, and what I did was, the first thing I did was I went to my Amazon original purchase and I, I clicked contact seller or request support straight through the, uh, the order information from when I placed the order on Amazon. It takes you over to Vivor's website for support, warranty. It, it does have a 12 month warranty. So I initiated a chat and the message, there's very few people who can speak English, and so there's all kinds of languages. These things are sold all over the world. Um, I waited a while, and I don't think I gave it a fair shot, but it, I think if I waited longer, I would have eventually gotten to chat with somebody, but it did suggest that they contact them another way, so I clicked the link, and it took me back to their page. It was kind of a, I was kind of getting bounced around. So that was on a weekend. I just gave up, and I said, I'm going to call during the week, Monday. So I... I, caught, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to call Amazon and see what they'll do. Amazon should be easier to deal with. Um, maybe they'll just replace the part. The person at Amazon said, you need to contact the reseller. I said, well, I, I, said, well, I contacted, I clicked the link on your invoice, the page. It took me to Vivor's site. Vivor's site said that there was nobody available. So I went ahead, talked to the person at Amazon, and they said, um, go ahead and if you think the problem is that, go ahead and purchase the price. She'll contact me later. I can submit the invoice to the cost and they will refund the money. I think that's the concession that Amazon was willing to do if I couldn't get help from Vivor or Boberon. So then I said, let me give this a fair shot, right? These, this is worldwide. These people are a whole different time zone on the other side of the world. Let me start the chat again and I chatted with somebody and they said, oh, well, this was again through Vivor. They said, this is a, this was purchased through a reseller on Amazon. You need to have, I, I need to get you with the Amazon support. Please allow a few days for an email. And I'm like, oh, great. Now that's when I called Amazon. I'm like, well, I don't wanna mess with this. Just get me my part. Well, the, at that point I thought, well, let me go through the process proper. So. In your Amazon page, there's a message reseller. I went ahead and did that. And I got a message back. It's, it's about 24 hours. It's overnight when you get a response. But I did get a response from Sharon. Sharon. And she said, what's the problem or how can I help you? And I described the issue. I attached a picture. I tried to attach a YouTube video, but Amazon will strip those out because I have a video showing exactly what it was doing. We went back and forth for a few days because again, it's 24 hours between replies. And they shared it with their, their technical people who understand these machines and can, and can try to fix it, right? Well, they're not gonna send somebody to your house or to fix it, but what they said was, Go ahead and purchase the governor or the potentiometer in this case, send them the invoice and they will cover the cost of it. So we already know that the gov the potentiometer fixes it. I bought one, it fixed it. I sent the invoice to them and they refunded it already. What more can you ask for? Now, I have no affiliation with Vivor, Boberon, Amazon, nobody. I have no affiliation with anybody. This channel is all about sharing my experience with you who are curious. A lot of people complain about these machines. There's certainly quality issues with these things. However, 
I can't jump on the bandwagon with everybody else and say their support sucks. It's not fantastic. I don't know that I'd call it 24 seven, but I contacted the reseller. It happened to be Boberon. They replied back. I told them what the problem is and they, they came up with a reasonable solution. Um, replace it, we'll, we'll cover the cost, you, you replace the part. Okay, and it fixed it, right? I don't really know what else, what more we can ask for from these cheap lays, right? You know, the entry, points is, entry price point is what gets us into this hobby. As long as these resellers do contact you back, now again, Boberon through Amazon might be different than Grizzly or uh, Best Equipped or whoever else. All I can share is my personal experience with what I've gone through, and I can't complain. They're, they're covering the cost of the faulty part. I'm within the 12 month warranty. There was no argument about it. There was no, it wasn't excessive back and forth. It was honest questions back and forth to get the information. And they, re, they resolved it in a reasonable amount of time. That's my experience. I can't jump on and say, say it's horrible. I can't jump on and say with, with other people out there and say these are terrible support, don't ever buy one, nobody's ever gonna help you. It's not my experience. Again, just my experience. Reseller Boberon, they replied to me and they covered the cost of the part. I really can't ask for much more than that. Um, you know, it's kind of greedy to say, well, just send me a whole new lathe. That would be pretty cool but it's not reasonable, right? If we just take the parts and we, we objectively look at what you get for what you pay for, what they claim they're gonna give you, so far, my experience has been exactly what they said you get. I'm still within the warranty and they honored it without really much back and forth or, or hassle. There you have it. I can't say anything bad about the support Considering all the all the details about everything, they replaced the part. They, they covered the cost of it. So there you go, my experience. Maybe if some of you will find this interesting or helpful, but I can't just say they're they're the worst ever and they don't help you. They helped me, they replaced the, they covered the part, the cost of the part to replace it, and we know that I already fixed it because I've already replaced it and tested it. I'm closing the video now, but I wanted to just share how that experience went. And, you know, before you just get mad at them, try to reach out to, to your vendor, your reseller. Give it a day or two. If they reply, work, work with them and you might get yours fixed too. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope to see you on the next one. Um, if you haven't, please subscribe and uh, we'll see you on the next one.